Um, first of all, what I want to mention is I have here the Empress in the Joie de Vivre deck as well as the Rider Waite deck. And the Empress deals heavily with fertility, okay? So this is a week where not only are you going to be very, very alluring and attractive to the opposite sex, it's also, or to whoever, uh, whatever gender um, that you're dating, um, you're going to be very attractive towards people around you. You're going to be oozing pheromones. And um, you're going to be seen as very, very fertile. You could also be on a very fertile cycle. And, um, you know, so needless to say, be, be very careful when it comes to, you know, unwanted pregnancy. Be very careful when it comes to um, people coming out of the blue and just um, soliciting you for dates and things like that. Okay, so it, it's just the energy that you embody. It's all very, very positive. And I, I don't feel like you're going to be complaining, but um, it, it's highly indicative of fertility. So, you know, be careful. Use protection for those that are expecting or those that are wanting to get um, pregnant. Congratulations then. Um, so that's where I want to start off. Um, I feel like with this love reading, for many of you, you've been waiting on something with the three of wands. This is like waiting to embark on a new journey, waiting to kind of escalate, take things to the next level, waiting for some type of a, a step up in your relationship. Like, are we moving in together? Are we getting married? Are we having children? Are you going to introduce me to your family? Am I going to uh, introduce you to my family? I feel like you were waiting on somebody that is taking forever to make up their mind, okay? I see an element here with the Empress, the biological clock. Like, I'm tired of waiting. I want it now, and I deserve it. And also, my biological clock is ticking. And you could be male or female watching this. I feel like you're at an age where you want a little bit more stability in your life. You're done with the whole, you know, dating and 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 first dates and blind dates and um, you know online dating. Like you're you're done with all of those um, people, and you really want to settle down and you really want to start a family. You have this nesting instinct about you. With the Empress, she's got that nest on her head. So I feel like that's where your mind is at. And I also feel as well, for some of you, um, you might have stayed in a relationship too because of children. You care about the kids, but then your partner, you feel they're not really carrying the weight. Or you feel like you have to, you know, be not only the mother or the father to your children, but you also have to play the parental role with your relationship partner, telling them what they need to do, telling them to step up their game, and telling them that, you know, hey, I'm doing everything in the relationship, where are you? So I see that element here about, you know, needing to make demands. And when you need to, when you need, if you need to make demands, go ahead and do so. Because I feel like the other person is going to step up, okay? If you are dealing with a water sign, I have here the Queen of Cups. This is a Pisces, a Cancer, a Scorpio. This is somebody that is going to be there with you. So the problem with water signs is that they don't really take initiative, even the best of them. I mean, if you tell them, hey, I really need this, that will really light a fire under their butts and get them going. Because I feel like, you know, as intuitive as they are, I feel like they, they miss the big things, like they, they see the little details, you know, like they'll cook you breakfast in bed because they're really sweet, they'll buy you flowers, they'll, you know, be there for you and just listen to all your vents and all your frustration all day, every day, if you need to vent, because emotionally they, they know that it's important. But I feel like sometimes they miss the tangible aspect of a relationship, you know. Um, so you kind of have to tell them and you kind of have to give them a time frame and you kind of have to tell them, I need this done within an hour. Because if you tell them I need it done, they might, you know, ponder over the best way to do something and then they waste a lot of time. So as spirited as you are, you have to learn to communicate with this person in a way where it expresses that 
I know you don't agree with this, but I need this done. I need help, you know. So whatever it is that you are dealing with with this person, I just feel like if it's child rearing, if you have children with a water sign, they might be the really, really sweet and, you know, um, the, the, they might be seen as the nice, nurturing parent. And you might be seen as the person, like the disciplinarian. And you feel like that's not fair, you know, so then you have to get them on board with you so that the two of you have an understanding or an agreement about how to raise the kids. So if you were dealing with a water sign, I feel like things need to be spelled out, okay? This is someone who's very loving, very nurturing as well, but they don't really take initiative the way that you do, and so dealing with them can be a little bit exasperating, okay? Um, for others of you, there has been a lot of waiting, and the other person is not really making a move. And if that is the case, you're going to be moving on. Okay, so if you're dealing with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and I especially see like Taurian, Capricorn vibe as well. If they're just sitting there, you know, not really making a move, not really moving in your direction, you're kind of like waving them goodbye. And you're just like, I'm starting a new phase in my life. If you're not able to kind of step up your game, I'm just going to be out of here. And I feel like for those of you who are dating casually, um, you might be drifting away from this earth sign and going to somebody a little bit more solid or somebody who is a little bit, um, I feel older and a lot more experienced, uh, a lot more willing to like waste time and, and, you know, a lot more decisive. So this is the week where you are definitely making major decisions in your love relationships, um, coming into this sense of abundance you're beautiful, you're highly sought after, you are the life of the party, you really stand out and you stand out from amongst the crowd and you have a gazillion options to choose from. So if somebody is very wishy-washy with their intentions and with their love, it could be the water sign or even the earth sign, you're really not going to entertain and you're not going to waste time because you feel like, you know, time is precious, I've got a gazillion things to do. So if I set a date with you and I, I spend and invest the time in you and you're not really making a move I'm not going to waste any more time so this is like taking ownership of your time and make making decisions as well to kind of uh, go with the people that actually you know give you like concrete ideas as what as to what they want or what they want from the relationship rather than waiting and wasting your time on people that are not coming back or wasting time on people that are not really making a move towards you I feel like you like an earth sign, you like an earth sign, but they're, they're very perplexed by you. They might be a little bit threatened, they might feel intimidated, or they might feel like you're a little bit careless, or you're moving too fast, or you have a lot of suitors, and that might be why they're not making a move. So if that is the case, then you kind of need to reach out and, you know, tell them how you feel. And then if they're still not budging, then, you know, goodbye. But I feel like they're, it's like this. They see you with all your plans and all your ideas and you're constantly on the go. You're probably very metropolitan. I see, and it, it's weird, but I feel like some of you are, you know, like a big city type of a person. And the other person is like a small town type of a person. And so they don't really understand your lifestyle. You might not understand their lifestyle either. And you feel that this lifestyle is not for you, whereas you want something a little bit more dynamic, robust, a little bit more cosmopolitan. And they don't understand it. So I feel like there are ideological differences. It doesn't mean that it's not going to work. But I feel like you have trouble understanding them and they, vice versa, have trouble understanding you. So... Either way, um, it's a good energy, but I feel like there there might be attraction that is on the side of, you know, opposites attract rather than true compatibility, okay? Um, in other areas of your life, the spiritual advice that I'm getting here is be gentle, but be very firm. And this is in regards to those that are dealing with children. You could be a teacher, a counselor, an advisor. You could run a summer camp. You can have your own children. Um, the first card out is the Hierophant, and every time I see this, I think of it as 
um, the disciplinarian, somebody who um, um, connects to a higher authority and then they implement the, um, the words and wisdom and the advice of the higher authority. This is what I usually call like childhood conditioning. If you've had parents who, are, who were very, very strict and, you know, many of you were um, rebellious when you were young, too. You were quite a handful. And um, I feel like, you know, when you bring this energy into your current environment where you're dealing with children, you tend to be like this, too, like very, very strict, very unforgiving. But this is a week where it's telling you, you know, you can actually get a lot more done if you were or, or get them to see things um, your way or to get them to kind of um, listen to you if you behave like this rather than behaving like the Hierophant. So this is someone who is very nurturing, very loving, has a lot of abundance. And, you know, this is somebody that is um, very fertile. Uh, your energy needs to be kind of like this, where you open up, where you don't um, speak from that space of like, you know, um, uh, like the, the, what is that, 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 that moral high ground and just, you know, come down and, and truly open up and, and try to listen to what the other, the younger person is telling you. So I feel like some kids, you know, for those who are parents, you've, you've got kids that are charmer. They don't want to get in trouble. And so they, they can charm the socks off anybody. You know, they're, they're like sweet and just very affectionate. And sometimes when they get in trouble and then, you know, instead of disciplining them, they kind of smile and give you the puppy eyes and then you laugh and then you end up not disciplining them. And they know this is how you operate. So they know how to get away with things every time they get in trouble. So the trick is, you know, to kind of um, be firm but gentle, okay? So be consistent as well with the discipline. So I definitely feel if there are, um, if you and your partner are together and you have children, I feel like there might be some really, really different, like glaring differences in the way that you raise kids, in the way that you discipline them, in the way that you see children. Um, what I'm also feeling as well with the Empress card and the Queen of Pentacles, this is massive abundance that's available to you. A lot of finances that are kind of um, in the picture, a lot of financial stability, wanting to have children, wanting to, you know, save up for that college fund and wanting your partner to be on board. And I also feel because of that, um, there's this sense here that you have everything and you might have said you know I really want to have children I really want to settle down buy a house and you find yourself in a, a work situation that gives you the financial abundance but now you're working so hard you're working a lot of overtime and you're just like when am I going to be able to you know um, even retire or when am I going to be able to take the time to see my grandkids or, or have the time away from work to have children. So I feel like, you know, the, the money, it's a major, major blessing. But the hours that are involved, I feel like the work environment's a little bit rigid. Um, you might have somebody that you're answering to. And I feel almost like let your work speak for itself. Rather than trying to win this person to your side, you're highly competent and capable of what you do. Let your work's product speak for itself and let that be, you know, let, let that speak for your credibility. Let that speak for your skills as a good worker, okay? So we have some really good things coming in for this week. Lots of fertility, lots of, I feel like it's a win, like almost like a job offer or promotion. If you're, do, if you're getting those uh, performance appraisal from your sub supervisors, what they really want to say is, um, I feel like you're very, very capable. So they really like you. You're dependable and very, very capable but they might tell you, you know, something unexpected. Like, for example, if you're hoping to get like 100% on a performance appraisal from, from you, uh, higher up, they might say, here are a few things that you need to focus on. Or they might assume that you already know that you're really, really good. 
So they might, instead of dwelling on all the times that you succeeded, they might say, let's talk about the other uh, projects that you had trouble with. Mainly because, you know, they already know that you're good. And so they, they want to flush out the stuff that you can improve upon. So don't feel bad about it, okay?